what is a remarkable historic moment for the Arab and Muslim world, the G7, the exclusive intergovernmental forum, has hastily called an extraordinary meeting, where apparently they will be formally inviting the newly formed nation, the United States of Arabia, to become a full-fledged member of its group. This development has come on the back of the surprising and astonishing announcement of the unification of all Gulf Cooperation Council members into a single federation. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman will now cease to exist as independent nations, but will still operate as states within this federation, resulting in much more eco-political power and prosperity for the future. No one saw this coming, neither Western nor Eastern allies, and not one single intelligence agency had any pre-warning of such an event. It has now been revealed that since the Arab Spring in 2012, with a proclamation by the then King of Saudi Arabia, Abdullah ibn Abdul Aziz Al Saud, that the GCC should consider the formation of a union more seriously. The Gulf nations took note, and subsequently, secretive talks between these six nations ensued and progressed quite rapidly on many fronts. A hurdle in 2017 was the diplomatic crisis between Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Using media misdirection, the countries labeled the crisis as one resulting from a dissonance in international politics and allegiances, although the real reason for the crisis has now been made clear as a disagreement in principle on the governance methods the Federation would take upon unification. With the resolution of this crisis, the road was reopened for constructive covert negotiations to resume, and a mere six years later, the announcement came as a shock to the world. The newest nation, the United States of Arabia, was now an unquestionable global power. With a young population numbering 72 million, its economy was now the fifth largest in the world, surpassing the United Kingdom and India, 40% of the world's oil reserves, 23% of its natural gas reserves, and 25% of world oil production would be controlled by this new nation. The country would also now boast the largest sovereign fund in the world, amounting to over $3.7 trillion in value. These newly united states commanded a new and reinvigorated attention. The developed world, caught by surprise, was now jockeying to re-establish stronger alliances and affiliations that would garner added favor and preference by the United States of Arabia towards their individual interests. Underdeveloped nations celebrated the emergence of this new nation on the global front and its reshuffling of the balance of power held historically by the very few. The power of this nation commanded respect, and this new nation presented a current reality for the world to contend with. Was this a nation to befriend or a nation to fear? Obviously, this fantasy is far from any reality. Such a union has never taken place. There have been flirtations with the principle of taking the Gulf Cooperation Council towards a stronger and more comprehensive bond that moves the collective towards a single market and border. But before analyzing the challenges to any such unification, let us take a deeper look at the benefits that would be substantial. And for some of these nations involved, that begins and ends with sustainability. A main advantage was that such a unification had regionally taken place before, and even more coincidental is the fact that one of the members of the GCC, the United Arab Emirates, had only half a century ago successfully, as a precedent, unified from a group of city-states into a federal monarchy to then become a strong regional player in the Middle East. For some of the stagnant GCC nations, rebirth as part of a larger entity would be a godsend. Unifying a vision towards prosperity and guided by young and energetic leadership would guarantee the long-term survivability of the collective's weakest links. For the others, those who have shown drive and ambition in transcending their local dominion and avoided the hesitant contentment of what has naturally been granted to them, unification would mean an ascendancy to more relevance on a global scale. But with all this positivity, what have been the main barriers for the establishment of the Federation? Even though the GCC is ruled by monarchies of various typologies, a key obstacle are the underlying theological affiliations each nation has that presents a major concern for other GCC members. For example, there are those who have leanings towards politicized Islamic religious groups, while there are others who are wholeheartedly against Islamic organizations being involved in political, economic, or social endeavors. Diverse monarchical governing systems also present an immovable complication. There are constitutional, absolute, and federal monarchies found within these six nations of the Arabian Gulf. 
but it's the associated and conditioned freedoms of speech, expression, and social behavior that mean something different for each nation. And their governments in turn have a very wide range of acceptance of these liberties. Most, if not all the Gulf nation's peoples are linked in more ways than one. Not only does the alignment of religion, language, identity, and origin set a great foundation, but it also facilitates a potential successful unity among the Arabian Gulf nations. What should also be known is that real familial interrelations exist and have existed for many decades amongst these countries. And this can be a powerful contributor towards triumph. But is the end goal really this attractive to the powers that be? Maybe, but time is passing and the passing of time will reveal all when we look back in hindsight and judge whether the actions or inactions taken by the leaders of today justify the successes or failures of tomorrow. But for all the rest of the common people of the Arabian Gulf, one nation, under God, indivisible, for sure, would be a much more powerful proposition.